Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Cerniglia. I am the Southwest Regional Manager for Schmidt, and in this webinar, we'll be reviewing the essentials of laser engraving. If you have a question at any time during the webinar, please send a message using the chat box on the right side of your screen, and Kyle Williams from our tech support team will follow up with you. Engraving is just one kind of laser mark so let's first talk about what it is and how it differs from other laser marks. Laser engraving involves a process where the laser beam displaces material from the surface of the part being marked. The depth will depend on your laser settings, the type of material you're marking, and how many passes the laser makes during the mark. There is a form of engraving called etching. Etching only removes the coating from a base material. The base material is often a different color than the coating, so you usually get a nice contrast mark. Another type of laser marking is annealing. Unlike engraving, annealing does not displace any material. It is a heat mark, a permanent mark caused by a thermochemical reaction on the surface of the material. Some laser marks are unique to plastic. Two such marks are carbonization and foaming. Carbonization is a thermochemical laser marking process that releases carbons, causing a discoloration in the plastic. The process is typically performed on light and clear plastics and results in dark or gray marks. Foaming, sometimes also referred to as frothing, occurs when the laser beam heats the surface of plastic causing oxidized gas bubbles to form in the top layer. This results in a raised mark on the surface of the plastic part. As you can see, there are a number of different laser marks. When choosing which to use, consider your application. The best application for laser engraving is whenever you need a durable mark or plan on doing any post-processing for example, if you're marking anything that's going to experience a lot of wear and tear, such as a metal pipe or drill bit, or if you're going to be painting over the mark, you'll want to go with laser engraving. When laser engraving or doing any other type of laser mark with a fiber laser, you typically need to adjust five settings, power, frequency, speed, hatch angles, and loop count. Understanding how these work together is key in finding the right settings for engraving. Power is perhaps the simplest setting to understand. It is the power of your laser, usually measured in watts. The higher the wattage, the more powerful the laser. The more powerful the laser, the deeper your mark will be, assuming all other settings are the same. Before we talk about frequency, let's first talk about the laser beam in a fiber laser. The laser beam is not a steady stream of energy. Instead, the laser emits light in pulses at regular intervals. Frequency determines how often the laser pulses. It's measured in kilohertz. As frequency decreases, the number of pulses per kilohertz decreases, but the energy output per pulse increases. As frequency increases, the number of pulses per kilohertz increases but the energy output per pulse decreases. The speed setting determines the speed at which the laser moves across the mark and is measured in millimeters per second. The lower the speed, the more material that is displaced. If your speed is too slow though, you can burn or deform the material you're marking. If you think your power might be too high or frequency too low, try increasing your speed setting. This may alleviate the problem while also shortening your cycle time. Let's look at the hatch angles next. Hatch angles are the angles at which the laser engraves the mark. Usually, these hatches leave a line pattern in your mark. If you don't care about the look of your mark, or if those lines are desirable, this may not matter. But if you're engraving something such as your logo, you may not want any visible lines in your mark. Using these four hatch angles with a hatch distance of 0.04 millimeters will give your engraving a nice solid fill. Zero degrees, 45 degrees, 18.43 degrees, 
and 71.56 degrees. The last setting is the loop count. The loop count determines how many times the laser will go over your mark. More loops lead to more depth, and this is the recommended way to increase the depth of your mark. You can increase depth by increasing your laser's power, decreasing the marking speed, lowering the frequency, or some combination of the three. However, doing so can negatively impact the quality of your mark. To show you the relationship between all these settings, we've created a laser engraving grid. For today's demonstration, we're going to use our GeoMark Pro. It's a 20 watt fiber laser with a class one enclosure and power Z axis. The laser is upgradable and for today, we'll be using a 100 watt fiber laser. As you can see, I have our logo set up nine times in a three by three square. Each logo is a different color and the colors refer to specific settings in this table on the right. We'll mark each of these logos at 100 watts, but slightly change the speed or frequency with each mark. For each mark, we'll only do one pass, but we'll use the four hatch angles we mentioned earlier, 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 18.43 degrees, and 71.56 degrees with 0 0.04 millimeter spacing. So here are the marks. In each row, the deepest marks are on the left. In each column, the deepest marks are on the top. But engraving isn't just about depth. Changing the settings affected the look and quality of the marks. Slower speeds produced darker marks. Higher speeds produced lighter marks and also had shorter cycle times. Higher frequencies produced uneven marks. How speed, frequency, and other settings affect your mark will ultimately depend on your application, but you can use these results as a guide as you adjust your settings. That's all the time we have today. If you have any further questions, you can reach out to us on social media, call us at 800-323-1332, and email Kyle Williams on our tech support team at kwilliams at gtschmidt.com. You can also visit us on the web at gtschmidt.com. Next week, we'll have a summary of today's webinar in our news section, which will include a picture of the marking grid we showed you today. Thank you for attending our webinar. We hope that you join us for a new webinar next month.